Hey everyone, welcome back to Crownstag VoiceOver. My name's Neil Glasgow. This is part two of my series on setting up Reaper for VoiceOver. So if you haven't gone and watched part one, I really do recommend you do that. There are some key tips in there and there's a particular version of Reaper that is going to be really important for you to download. So if you haven't done that yet, please do go back and then come back to this video. So as you can see here, we've got Reaper just the way we left it, which is absolutely fantastic. That's what we spent the last video setting up and making sure that we can do. But in this video, I'm going to show you what Reaper does as default when it sets up a new project. And it's actually not as helpful as you want it to be. So I'm going to talk you through exactly how to make this the perfect setup for your recordings. So I'll just open up my Windows Explorer and I'm going to open up Reaper Media. Now this is exactly what it looks like, all these files here, what it looks like when you set up a new project. So if I just record a little bit of empty space you'll see over in the right hand corner here a new file has been created and actually after 5, 10, 15 of these, that window is going to become an absolute mess to try and navigate. What we want to do is when you save a project is actually save it in one of these Reaper Media folders. Now I always do mine by the month. So if I save this file as voice one and I want to select create subdirectory for project. Do it once, you'll never have to do it again. But what this means is that every bit of audio that you create in a project will go directly into that particular folder and not under this ungodly looking mess of Reaper Media. Okay, so now what we're going to do is click on Options, scroll down to Preferences, and in Preferences, what you're going to want to select is Prompt to Save on New Project. That means every time you start a new project, Reaper will prompt you to select a folder to save it in, rather than doing it at the end. Doing it at the beginning is going to save you a massive amount of time. What I also like to select under project saving is timestamp backup and keep undo. Now what this means is if you make a mistake, there will be a record of it. And I like to make sure that Reaper automatically saves this for me about every minute. So that way I'm never far away from a save. Hit apply and then we're good to go on to the next step. On the next step you want to select under general you want paths. Under the default save new project path just write media. This will then create a media folder for you under Reaper as default. You don't need to do anything else. After that, we're going to want to select our default render path. Now this is where Dropbox comes into play for me. Now I'm going to navigate to my Dropbox. I already have a folder called Renders in my Dropbox. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. You can create one if this is your first time. Every time I render a project, it is saved to my cloud. That means that I can access it any time I want and it's really simple using Reaper. If you ever make a mistake and don't save your project you can actually set up an uncategorized folder for unsaved projects. So again what I like to do is navigate to my Dropbox and then under my Dropbox I've got a folder that I've just called uncategorized. That's where all the unsaved projects that I haven't labelled properly will go. You can recover them whenever you need and you can also delete them whenever you want. And the last one is the repeaks file. Repeaks are something that Reaper creates automatically in a new project and they're what takes up the bulk of all of those new folders. They don't really make that much of a difference and if you delete them, Reaper will just recreate them the next time you open the project. So don't worry about it too much. Navigate to my Dropbox, again, Repeaks folder and that's where I save it. When I'm done, I hit Apply. That is one of the most important steps that you can do. Great, so now what I'll do is delete that track 
and then I'll record a little bit of noise for you so that you can see what that looks like once you've rendered it. So, now that I've recorded that, I'm going to go to File, down to Render, and in this page, this is where we can set up some of our default settings. You'll see that it's named Voice One, and you can confirm that at the top left-hand corner that that's what the project is called when you started it. Now, most samples will be done at 44,100 hertz, and you're going to want to render in a mono and unless otherwise requested. Most auditions are done in MP3, so I like to set that as my default setting. Now, once I've got that, I can move up to Presets, scroll down to All Settings, and save Preset. And again, I like to call this Default Voice Render, and hit OK. When that's done, hit Apply, and then hit Render. This will be done really quickly because it's a really short file. Hit Close, and then what we can do is actually navigate to our Dropbox, look in my renders, and there it is. Immediately offline and accessible anytime that I need. Now, what I'm going to show you is the quick editing elements using Reaper, using the dynamic split, and one other piece of software that we're going to need to download in a moment. But first, let me just show you some of the recorded audio. This is taken from one of my client projects, and as you'll see, I'll actually make quite a few mistakes. And when I do make a mistake, you'll see the clicker waveform, which I've told you about in some of my other videos, and it's a really great way to be able to navigate through your editing when you make a mistake. It's an absolute lifesaver. There it is. And as you can see, I held it a little bit too close to the mic, which is why I've gone into the red. But it's a very definitive waveform that I can go back and edit out. Now, before we get to the editing stage, what I'm going to need you to do is actually go back online. We need to download an extension for Reaper. Now, that is SWS Extensions. Now, this is a completely compatible extension. It's absolutely free that works with Reaper. But what it will allow you to do is quickly normalize your voiceover. So again, once you come up to the page, this is it here. I need to use the Windows 64 bit, so I'll download that. And this will automatically install to Reaper. So you don't really need to worry about it. And Reaper brings me back to my previous project, and now I'm going to show you all of the editing techniques that I use. So as you can see here, we have the waveform of the clicker that shows me I made a mistake. What I need to do is play the part that tells me I made a mistake, highlight that part, you select it with Shift and S, and then delete. Easy as pie. And then what you'll see there is with the ripple editing that we selected that's highlighted in green, that snaps everything together. Then just check that what you've edited makes sense and sounds right and you don't need to go back and re-record just by selecting back a little bit and playing your recording. And now what I can show you very quickly is me scrolling through my entire recording and editing out my mistakes extremely quickly. Having the clicker being able to identify where my mistakes are, it means that I can really navigate and jump around my recording as much as I really need to. This has saved me dozens of hours over the years on editing, so it's a really handy tip to be able to pick up. So now that I've finished editing everything, I'm going to take one more look over to make sure that there are no more waveforms that indicate I've made a mistake. And when I'm happy with that, what I'm going to do is glue everything together. This is a really important step. Don't miss it out. You're going to select all with Control and A. Then you're going to glue it all together 
with Control, Shift and G, just like this. Great, now we have one uninterrupted piece of audio, but we're not done yet. This is where Dynamic Split really comes into play. Dynamic Split is like adding a noise gate at the end of your recording. If you use a noise gate at the beginning and you've got it set a little bit too aggressively, you're not going to get that sound back. Dynamic Split, on the other hand, gives you the exact same effect, but you can tweak it and modify it and, most importantly, not to lose any audio. So we select our top track, make sure that your room tone track is not selected, otherwise it will be deleted. Then we're going to hit D on our keyboard and that will start the dynamic split. Now, as you can see here, I have some predefined settings that I've put on that work for my voice. I'm really highlighting that for you. They work for my voice. So once dynamic split has done its thing, it will look like this. And this is again why we use the version of Reaper that we've selected in part one of this series, because what the dynamic split is doing here is eliminating the sounds. The later versions of dynamic split actually push all these spaces together, eliminating any pauses that you've purposefully put in. But what we've done here is we've eliminated any deep breaths, we've eliminated any clicks, any wet sounds that might be coming out, but you also want to check that you haven't cut off any sounds that are important. I tend to find that my K sounds or my P sounds, the ends of words, can sometimes be taken out. So I can go back and I can alter this. So if I just show you quickly here, this is a short, sharp breath. I can identify it because I know what they look like. But Dynamic Split is automatically removing that for me because I've told it based on my settings that I don't need that in my recording. That's where this part comes in. Once I've done that, I hit split. Now, the next most important bit is you want to highlight your room tone and drag that across the whole section of your recording. Drag it up and now we're going to merge them like we did before. Perfect. And here's where the SWS extension comes into play. So we want to click on extensions at the top and just see that SWS has been installed. Great, it has. So what we want to do now is actually scroll back up to the top and select actions and then show action list. And again, we'll get a menu with lots of items that we can select, but the one that we're interested in is normalize. Once you type in normalize, what you're going to want to select is the one down second from the bottom. That says normalize to select dB value. Once you've done that, click on add. And I like to use control, shift and N. This is my hotkey that I can type in to make sure that window pops up. When you hit run, this is the window you're going to see. So if I write in negative 3, that then changes my audio to be negative 3 dB. If I hit Control shift and n again, again, I can write in negative 3. I can write in negative 6, making it a little bit quieter. Or I can go the other way and put in plus 5, making it absolutely far too loud. So let's take it back to negative 3 and back to the beginning. And if I hit play and click on my compression, you're going to see that in action. Now, you can tweak this if you want. As I say, you want it to try and hit around negative 6 dB and hit your wet sound to make sure that that brings it back up to volume. As long as your render is between negative 3 and negative 6, you're doing okay. So we'll go back to File and Render, select our presets, and then hit Render. And what you'll see here in the red is the maximum that the peak gets to. Now this is quite a long file, so I've sped this up for delivery. But we now get to the peaks that we're looking for. 
And if we go back to our Dropbox and to Renders, again, you'll see the file that has just been recorded exactly where you want it to be. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this has been helpful and informative. If it has, again, drop me a like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. And if you've got any other questions about Reaper that I haven't covered in this video, drop me a message. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Remember, you can absolutely be a voiceover artist. And with this setup of Reaper, you're definitely onto a winning track. I'll see you in the next video.